come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? (laughs) Thank you for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie review podcast where we choose a movie round robin every week, sit down, watch it, and then crack open a beer and talk about it for your listening pleasure. We'd like you to write in and tell us what you thought of tonight's episode or any previous episode on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or by email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. <laughs> what? Or on Instagram at Saturday Night, Night Freak, Freak Show. Show. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we fucked that up. Sorry. <laughs> and you can also, uh, you've already found us probably on one of the fine podcast repositories where we can be found. iTunes, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn, Google Play. If you Maybe did find Cast us Roller. Or if you're using Cast Roller, I'll be Sean. Or Pod Bay. <laughs> yeah, Pod Bay. Uh, but please give us a like, a star rating, a review, or subscribe because all of that stuff helps us find other like minded individuals like yourself. These are the Internet Radio Superstars Toby, Michaela, Holly. And I'm Colin. Toby is pinch hitting for Sean tonight. He is off um and we'll be back he also was choosing tonight's movie predator 2 i know we told you that was what we were gonna watch so we, we pre- call an audible yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we may be doing predator 2 sometime in the future but don't count it soon <laughs> Oof. so tonight's movie was chosen by holly me Ho- holly what did we watch <laughs> we watched arachnophobia from the year 1990 directed by Frank, Frank Marshall. Marshall. Who is he? <laughs> uh, he directed uh, films like Alive and the ever popular Congo. Oh, Congo. <laughs> ever popular. <laughs> You're being generous by calling it ever popular. Yeah. You, the I cult what, classic Congo. I think what you meant to say, riding the coattails of Jurassic Park Congo. <laughs> yeah. Silverback. Yeah. That's the silverback you realize. But if I were to list his uh, producer credits, we'd be here all night because there's a ton. And they're big movies. Every so. Spielberg and Zemeckis movie. Yeah, basically. all of them. Yeah. All of them. Because he was linked at the hip with Kathleen Kennedy, who is mm-hmm. now the head honcho of That's, Lucasfilm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. But Kathleen Kennedy and Frank Marshall were a producing partner for a lot of mm-hmm. uh, 80s and 90s Spielberg mm-hmm. things. And this was his directorial debut. Yeah. Yeah. Arachnophobia, yeah. for those yeah, of you who it, don't yes, know, was. means... <laughs> fear of spiders. So this is a movie about... Spiders. Okay. <laughs> and the fear of them. <laughs> facing your fear of spiders. <laughs> Jeff Daniels facing his fear of spiders, specifically. Also weird spider molestation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Don't you worry, we'll get to that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Holly, why don't you tell us a little bit about what this movie's about, or the plot. Let, let's uh, get into this. What, and this is going to be a spoiler podcast, so just so you are forewarned, we're going to talk about the movie in depth. Yeah. What's it about? Uh, this movie, it starts off in the uh, the jungles of Venezuela. There is an entomologist and a uh, photojournalist that are researching a possible new uh, breed of spider. In the jungle. And how do they go about that research? How do they Carefully. Go? <laughs> but they do something uh, specific. They have, no, they have, um, they have a method that I don't necessarily agree with <laughs> in this film. Um, it's killing what they're researching. They fog an entire tree yeah. in they the rainforest. They fog an entire tree. <laughs> to Kill the point all. that bugs are raining from the sky. Yeah, literally. <laughs> and they're collecting them as their dead bodies are falling to I'm the ground. I'm not sure how effective that is for a breed that they don't know anything about. They could, like, have, they could have just made them all extinct. They, yeah, they could have just extinct an entire yeah. species for all they know. But, but in the name of science... Because all of the little bugs are falling down. You hear the little plink, plink, plink. And then you hear the giant plonk. Of the giant spider landing in the collection right. basket, and then you hear plonk, 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 and all the giant spiders falling down. It's uh, it's pretty effective. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how did, Colin? How did you say it earlier? You 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 hear it before you see it? Yeah, Is it's that, a, yeah. well, I mean, because Frank Marshall Spielberg. was a yeah yeah it, it very much so. Yeah. He learned obviously the language of film from Steven Spielberg, yeah. where it's like we're gonna 
let you hear this thing before you actually see yeah. it. And so, you know, you, there's that buildup, I guess. And or yeah. watch the character react to it before you actually see it. Right. Wait, this is right. the, like, the Jurassic Park, you know, like the... The, the water, water glass. Water yeah, glass. Water glass. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Instead, it's dead bugs raining from the sky. Yeah. yeah. I like, like the do. water glass. Which is better. But yeah. Yeah. It's more I, subtle. I do, I do it's more like subtle. the scene. I do like the scene, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even though I don't agree with the method. I, I do like the scene. I think, it, I think it's cool. Yeah. From, a, okay. from a directorial standpoint, it's... It's, it's pretty great yeah. from a scientific standpoint. It's what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> like, this is what they do, right? Gruesome. Yeah. <laughs> because as we established, they don't like capture these things in the wild and take them home and, the, and put them in a glass jar and they die of old age and then they pin them up to a board. No, right. they murder no. them. That's right. On site. They pin but, them in a fucking drawer. Yeah. But better than pinning them alive to a board? I mean, come on. What are you going to do with all those like, you know, butterflies around that? Yeah. Didn't you have one of those when you were a kid? A board with all the butterflies pinned on it? Oh, yeah, yeah. my oh, brother no. had okay. one of those. No? Of those. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah, no, my, was my brother had one. one. <laughs> yeah. Four. I would maybe I lived with a psychopath. I don't know. <laughs> that was a leading question. Now we know. There you go. So it's like that that test online was like answer these ten questions and we'll tell you if you're a psychopath. That yeah. I just answered one of them. So <laughs> yeah. Michaela aced that quiz, by the way. Yes, uh Yes, I did. Buzzfeed is concerned. Buzzfeed about you. is is. I'm now like flagged. Under yeah, government. you're on Buzzfeed's most wanted. Yeah. Buzzfeed is actually contacting the CIA yeah, right yeah. now. Like, flag this lady. Keep an eye on this one. No, my brother would like had a full blown like entomologist drawer in his bedroom of like bugs pinned to stuff. Yeah, yeah, so normal. yeah. Okay, yeah, very. I will say he was like he's like twelve years older than me. Well, so I you mean, know, the like, kids would collect you know. bugs, but I mean, yeah, no, he I had a, like he had a straight up drawer to, of like yeah. everything pinned and labeled. Uh, but did, did he, and he did it? He pinned them? Yeah. Wow. Bug killer. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Man, I mean, yeah. yeah. I collected fireflies. Yeah. In the jar. <laughs> yeah. And then I insisted on keeping the jar by my bed, and then woke up and they're all dead in the morning. Uh, yep. You got to poke holes. I feel like every. I feel like every yeah. kid had that experience. Oh though. yeah. That's that's a rite of passage. Yeah. Did every kid have an experience where they were traumatized by a spider? <laughs> Definitely. Not yes. the same way as Jeff Daniels. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. Not to the extremity of anyone in this movie, but. All right, so Jeff Daniels is, well, I mean, okay, I mean, the opening scene, right? They go to the Amazon, they discover a gigantic mm-hmm. spider the size of a football. Huge. Or something, obviously. So big, Huge. he rustles like plants when he walks through them, like the yeah. bushes rustle. It's like King Kong. Yeah. Yeah, it's it really a is. Fucked on the spider. Yep. Again, before you see the thing, you see the tree, you know, the bushes or whatever. <laughs> yeah, the, bushes the, the, rustle. The, the, yeah. the leaves on the plants parting as it's yeah. like, you know, <laughs> yeah. heading through the underbrush. Um, Which is too big for any insect ever. Yeah. That's just too much. Mm-hmm. And it's also, this is an opportune moment to point out the score from Trevor Jones, the guy who did Last of the Mohicans. It's scored fantastic. This big, like, uh, yeah. sweeping, epic thing that starts off the movie. A lot of heavy drums, which is effective in this movie, especially, but mm-hmm. like lots of like really unsettling yeah. low drums. We were sold the movie in the trailers that this is going to be like uh, a horror movie, right? Mm-hmm. Kind of like it's a Disney fied horror movie. When I say Disney yeah. fight, we're saying that because it's Hollywood Pictures, which yeah. was, uh, this was the first release. This was release. the first release movie for Hollywood Pictures, yeah. For some reason, Disney in the 90s was trying to diversify. Oh, I think they wanted to do like. They wanted to do more adult movies. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they did, they had Hollywood Pictures and um, Touchstone Pictures. And I'm not sure what the difference is between those two labels, to be honest with you. Like, Touchstone only does this, you know, like Dirty Rotten Scoundrels and. Mm. Or maybe that was a Hollywood picture. Three and men homeward, and a baby. Homeward that, Bound. Know. Yeah. What was the difference? Between <laughs> they did Hollywood Homeward and, Bound. Yeah. <laughs> They're all owned by Buena Vista Distribution yeah. or whatever. But uh, they were just trying some things. I just, don't know. Just yeah. testing the waters. Testing the waters. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, so the spy, the the gigantic spider. So the, the we should also say the cast: uh, Julian Sands, the Warlock. Yes. Check out our past episode on Warlock on this <laughs> show. Uh, he plays the entomologist, the mm-hmm. professor who knows all this stuff about the spiders. And uh, his photojournalist is an American from Canaima, California. 
Canine yes, Mine, yes. USA. Yeah. Yes. yeah. A small, pleasant town. But this gigantic <laughs> spider ends up biting this guy and stowing away in his casket after he dies and being transported to the good old US of A. That's right. <laughs> Crazy Venezuelan yep. spiders <laughs> invading <laughs> small town USA. Taking our jobs. <laughs> it wouldn't be a creature movie if you didn't have your foreign guy that was like ridiculously obsessed with the creature, which is Julian <laughs> yeah. Sands. You know, who's like, it's so beautiful, you don't appreciate it. You know, that's that's Julian Sands' character. He is kind of like yeah. the Ash from Alien, right? Yeah, because you know, yes, British he guy, totally is. You know, yeah. like, I admire its beauty. He doesn't yeah. say these lines, but that's yep. kind of. But that's who he is. Yeah, the way this guy plays the the character, like, there's always been something otherworldly to me about Julian Sands, which is why it's like. Oh, well, he's face. a warlock, right? I mean, totally buy that. That's like to me, like his defining role. No one else has seen <laughs> yeah. this movie. He looks you should like check a, it yeah, out. He's he a like a, we were saying poor man's Jason Isaacs from yeah. Harry Potter is Broke what he is. Lucius Malfoy. Yeah. yeah. Now yeah. that you're saying that, I am totally like going to retrofit every and like <laughs> that. Jason Isaacs is totally ripping off or in the Probably. mold of the Julian Sands. Probably. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I forgot what my point was. As the man said, no, as the, yeah, he's the guy who, uh, you know, is, is like through his performance, he never seemed in that otherworldliness. It's like there's scenes where he's supposed to be, I don't know, what would you say, um, going into a hazardous situation. Mm hmm. But he's got that look on his face. Like, yeah. it's conveyed he's through fearless. his personality that he's, uh, like, stiff he's fascinated lip. by it. Stiff upper lip. Is yeah. it, he has, like, a smile. It's like a perma smile. A it's smugness. Like, I can't yeah. tell. Smarminess. Smarmy. Is he? Yeah. Does he come off yeah. as smarmy? A little bit. Because he's so bit. confident in his knowledge that yeah, he's like, fuck, fuck y'all. I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. He does, yeah, his first words, I think, maybe set that tone, like, to the guy. The guy gets off the boat. This is the photographer who's joining the expedition to go find the spiders. And he's like, oh, you know, I've been sick and I've had a fever. And Julian Sands is like, you know, be sick on your own time. We have to go do this. And just the way the other guy reacts is like, what a jerk. And you're like, okay, this is this guy's clearly going to be an asshole for the rest mm-hmm. of the movie. But, like, did you get the feeling that he was like a... The, I mean, did he come off as an asshole to you guys? Uh, yes. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah kind of. Yeah. You're kinda. just saying because I mean, he's British. <laughs> I think, Are you I don't know. <laughs> Are you triggered <laughs> by this guy? <laughs> yeah. He seemed, he seemed kind of snotty, but I don't know if, I don't know if I'd say he seemed like an asshole. He just seemed, he just really took his job seriously. Uh, like, kind of know-it-all, but not. In like a violent or offensive way, just kind of a nonchalant know-it-all. Like, yeah, I know everything about all yeah, these fucking yeah. bugs, and you don't. Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but yeah. he does know everything about these fucking bugs, and we don't. Yeah. Or does okay. he? Sheldon <laughs> Cooper syndrome. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's Sheldon Cooper syndrome. That's <laughs> true. Yeah. Exactly That's true. It. He does seem, I think, like later on. I mean, his presence. Well, his presence in the movie is broken, and we're talking like he's the star yeah. of the movie. He's the introductory, you know, person that we meet for the first fifteen minutes yeah. or so. At this, this point, he's the star. Opening in Venezuela. Yeah. Yeah. And then he doesn't reappear in the movie until the like third act, mm-hmm. where he's mm-hmm. called in to solve the problem. Right. He's the guy with the knowledge that's going to connect the dots and say, oh the my God, this plan. is the mm-hmm. yeah. spider from Venezuela, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, and at that point, it, it's like his contributions do, do seem kind of helpful, mm-hmm. you know? Right, it's like, yeah. we are going to stomp this thing out and kill it once and for all. Right. And then he makes like the horror movie mistake. Of, I guess it's the overconfidence. It's it's the you know equivalent of being like, "Hello, is anyone there?" You know, like a horror movie equivalent. You know, he goes into a barn where the giant spider is living. Uh, you know, there's going to be reinforcements coming soon, and they're going to take care of this thing. So, so he, obviously, of- he goes at night by himself, completely uncovered. Like you do. Yeah, right. like you do. Why aren't you yeah. wearing a yeah. hazmat, sir? You know, at that point, they know. He is fully aware that there is, well, I don't he doesn't know how this is a giant spider. He has to. The size of that web. He knows. Yeah, he's they, they, he's, they saw it in Venezuela. No, he never saw the giant one. This is all a hypothetical creature to them. They, because it hops, in Venezuela, it hops onto the luggage crate or whatever, Bites one dude while he's sleeping and then smuggles its way like James Bond. Spider James Bond. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Into yeah. the casket, gets to America, 
funeral home, gets out, chases a dog and a cat through a dog door, gets yeah. picked up by a raven and carried to the property. Wait, this, and this, is, this is and the barn. raven. This is the like the like epitome like entry into our Saturday Night Freak Show. You know. M- Animals of Hollywood actors documentary <laughs> yeah, because there are f- like what four animals we got the spider we got the cat two cats two the cat bird, actors the crow the, the crow and the dog yeah all in this one and movie about a hundred spiders and three hundred spiders <laughs> three hundred okay so there you go Michaela they're the, has they're the fucking spiders three, of spiders <laughs> they had to the import three hundred spiders spider. to Australia yeah yeah this is this is prime Saturday Night Freak Show um. Animals of Hollywood documentary <laughs> footage here in this movie. For those of you don't who don't know what we're talking about, we've, we're we're con- contemplating writing a book. We're workshopping. We're yeah. workshopping it with right <laughs> in here in the public with you listening, uh, <laughs> trying to document the family trees of famous Hollywood animals. <laughs> if you can point us to, well, we're gonna we're gonna point you to. We're the gonna find out, scorpions. Like, yeah, who the yeah. spiders, mommy and daddy was, and whether or not they were in a movie. <laughs> And all these the family, cats and dogs. The Hollywood family tree of all those animals. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> but that orange cat that was in this movie, like the glorious long haired orange yeah, cat. It was a great Morris, orange cat. cat. Like, okay, that had to have been like Hollywood <laughs> cat royalty, right? Like, <laughs> I think so. Like, I think so. <laughs> like, that cat like, looked familiar, dude. A star, Toby. <laughs> yeah. A be, cat star. That cat looked familiar. That cat's long hair was groomed so perfectly that there was no gorgeous. way he, like, his parents weren't in a movie. It was or gorgeous. Something. Like, at the very least, his parents were in a cat litter commercial, if nothing at else, right? Least. You know, like, they, like, yeah. like, they don't just cast For any items. cat. <laughs> like, that cat came from a Hollywood family. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's a movie you, cat. You feel me? Yeah. 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 Can't just be a cat off the street. No. Business. Have you have you Training have you noticed? You, know, you, think, you yeah. think that cat was discovered, Toby? <laughs> yeah. Is that what you think? Do you think that cat was just hanging out at a mall and someone was like, "Hey, you'd be a great model." You've got yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. You've got it, kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like, have you ever noticed like promotional cats are almost always orange cats? Yeah. Like, you know, that's not a coincidence. I'm sure there's a it's you know, that, I'm sure there's a marketing yeah. reason no, as to why that there stems, are that orange stems cats. from fucking Breakfast at Tiffany's. Yeah, Molly Golightly's cat. That. I think that, that and I think they just yeah. look better on camera than most. They do other look cats. great on camera. Yeah, I think that's Especially what yeah. part in of it color, is. Am I right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. Just like Gazorp Gazorp Field. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I th- I think that I think there's a, a marketing reason for it. I f- I feel like you know there's a reason they don't use black cats. Yeah. Black cats probably don't market very well, and they don't look good on camera because it's hard to capture mm-hmm. you know anything about them. But mm-hmm. yeah, I'm sure that cat has genealogy in Hollywood. We're going to find out for you in our yeah. book. Yeah. <laughs> the, the famous animals of Hollywood from the Saturday Night Freak Show yep. crew. Um, okay. So the other, uh, you know, I mean, the, 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 the actual movie proper begins when the spider lands on the property of Jeff Daniels. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who you may remember from movies such as Dumb and Dumber and Speed and, and Dumber and Dumber 2. And Looper. <laughs> and Newsroom. Oh, he was in newsroom. Looper? Yeah. yeah, he was on Looper. Huh. He was the he was um Joseph Gordon Levitt's boss. Remember that was like oh you God. need to get close these fucking loops. I about yeah, he that. was an asshole in that movie. But he was great. Yeah, from yeah. Practical Magic. Yeah, ooh, Practical Magic. That's a great movie. Sandra Bullock. That's right. Yep. He was in Practical Magic. Yeah, I think yeah, so. Yes, he Who was. was he? He was the guy. No, he wasn't. Okay, he wasn't uh, in that movie at all. But I had Michaela going. Yeah, yeah, you did. That was um Nicole Kidman. That was the what's his name? The fucker. He's he was from Rockford. What oh, is Aiden it? Quinn. Aiden Quinn. Uh, they're basically what? the same guy. As in um Mr. Turner on um Boy Meets World? No. Aiden Quinn? That's Different not Aiden Quinn. Quinn. Okay. No, no Aiden well, Quinn. Well, Mr. Turner from, from Boy Meets World is from Rockford. Uh, uh, Benny and June. He was in Benny and June. Yeah. Oh. He was the brother. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Aiden okay. Quinn. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So <laughs> we can have him in this movie. Why not? So Spider lands on this property and it promptly sets up uh, housekeeping in the barn yep. in a romantic scene. Why not? Where it mates with a common household spider. Okay, which, wait, which, wait, wait, wait. I have hold, a question. Yeah. Okay. Let's because get into this. Jeff Daniels character is a doctor who's, you know, from coming from San Francisco. He's relocating to the country. He's going to take over the practice of, uh, of mm-hmm. uh, just local MD, doctor. Right? Yeah. And, um, they find, well, it's established that he has arachnophobia, and 
they find a little spider. I think the first day, of course, walking in, he's like, well, we're in the country, and here's a spider. His wife picks it up and is like, I'm going to take this thing outside and put it in the barn. Yeah. This is a tiny little spider. <laughs> tiny house spider. But as my memory serves from watching this film, there is the gigantic football spider, Big Bob, as he was known on the <laughs> set, because it was an animatronic creature. Neat. Designed by Jamie Heineman for Mythbusters. And in one of his after, first design jobs ever. Named, named after, after Robert, Robert Zemeckis. Zemeckis. Because of the association that Frank Marshall had with Back yeah. to the Future. Yeah. And uh, the scene of the the mating scene. The love scene. The spider love scene. Which the uh, furthers. The arachnophilia scene. Yeah. That's which right. furthers the James Bond theory that he just fucks every female spider he comes across, right? The spider galore. Yeah, mm-hmm. because it is it is like a silhouette, galore. but like it's it's shot like a love scene though. <laughs> spider galore. Uh, yeah. I like that one. He just needed a little parachute with a flag on it. Yeah, for that scene well, where he leapt out. Like of the that, tree. that's the spider love scene is like shot by silhouette though. Yeah. Like it's like a straight up James Bond love yeah. scene. Yeah, yeah like, it's, fucking it's fucking hot. It's you fucking see, romantic. Yeah, yes. <laughs> you see, like mandibles raise up over other, like another spider's body, and they then, are like, embrac- they fade I out. Got, I know embracing. I got my mandibles raised up. <laughs> <laughs> but here is my wow. question. Wow. Uh, do- <laughs> <laughs> TMI. We're just waiting for Holly to go. Like that's it, Toby. We're cutting your mic. Yeah. <laughs> Sean's not here to do it, so dude, it's that on was someone strike else. two, man. You're yeah. on your way. <laughs> so here is my question: Little tiny house spider. Tiny, in that yeah. love scene, I believe we're in the scene that I can't believe we're the mating about a spider scene. Love scene. <laughs> That is not a tiny little spider, and and the queen, which later becomes the, like this, becomes the, uh, the 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 centerpiece of the action. There is the queen, which is basically a tarantula, mm-hmm. and then there is Big Bob, who is the the general the small dog, yeah, spider. Yeah, um, I thought it was the little spider that they took out from the house. I thought it's somehow so. Like, growing, yeah, to yeah, yeah definitely. Worse, but I, it, because it mated with the James Bond yeah. spider yeah. and just like exploded. <laughs> and came uh, that's yeah. what the IMDb trivia says: is that it mated with hmm. the house spider. So yeah, but it didn't look like that. But that's what is can't canon? Okay. Okay. Can't I, I mean I don't know for sure. I mean if there's a canon for this movie, I assume that's canon. Mm. There is now. So. There is now. Mm. Now it's canon. Yeah. There you All go. Right. Okay. Yeah. Then. But yeah, no, We're I, just I'm going to have to accept it. Because I'm yeah. pretty sure that was supposed to be the spider. Whether yeah. it was to scale or not, I don't mm. know. But I think yeah. that was supposed to be I the mean, spider. it was a very quick scene, and it was very... It, it almost could have been figure pu- finger puppets the way it was done. <laughs> like, the way it was silhouetted and like, uh, mandibles. <laughs> like, sorry, guys, I'm miming this mandibles. out. So I'm sorry, she guys. Is, this is no, so she's, she's legit miming, miming this, this out. out right like, I know it's great for an audio and then podcast. The spider but touched like, the other spider like that. Like this. And, yeah. her, her fingers are overlapping right yeah. now. Show me where the other spider touched you. <laughs> <laughs> like this. Yeah, there you go. Oh my God, like stop that. showing me that. Yep. <laughs> On our Instagram, no. Okay, yeah. we really thought about it. Um, oh my god, no, that's genius. we will post it. We will post that. Okay, so um, yeah, I guess maybe I had a confusion the first time that I saw this film uh, way back in the day in the theater. The idea that you know it's like it's established as a little spider, and then later there are two spiders, which I think I was not clear on, mm-hmm. which made the end reveal of Big Bob popping out. You know, yeah. in the shock scene. More like, who the fuck is that? Yeah. Because they show the tarantula, which is the queen, mm-hmm. right. and the general later on. Right. And I'm like, where did the tarantula queen come from? It's just like how, in, at, spoiler alert for Lake Placid, if you have not seen it yet, skip ahead, you know, a minute or two. Uh, at the end of Lake Placid, like, they revealed there was two crocodiles the whole time. Mm. And that's how they were like killing everyone is that there was two crocodiles. Uh. And that that was like a shitty, like, you know, reasoning for the story that they came up with very last minute. I kind of feel like it was, might've been the same thing with this movie, you know? Oh, JK, there were two spiders the whole time, you know, in our book that we're going to be writing about Mm -hmm. Hollywood animal dynasties. Mm -hmm. Do you think the tarantula, which is a real spider, 
Mm-hmm. Is related to any of the spiders from William Shatner's Kingdom of the Spiders? It has to be because it was all tarantulas in Kingdom of the Spiders. Like the whole premise of Kingdom of the Spiders is that this Texas town is taken over by tarantulas, which is the most frightening thing you could ever imagine. Like, are they radioactive tarantulas? No, they're just regular ones. They come they're out just, of a big hole in the ground. At, but uh, it's because they're breeding. There, it's their breeding season. That's what it is. Is uh, like it's because like have you ever seen the footage of like certain areas where they're like. Spiders are breeding, and there's like clouds of like their web oh, yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what yeah. that's what Kingdom of the Spiders is about. Right, but like there's a part in Kingdom of the Spiders where William Shatner's like running away, and he runs into a room, and he like slams the door shut and turns around, and the whole door is like covered in spiders. Yeah. And then like there's another part where his girlfriend is covered in tarantulas, and he grabs him by the gross bulbous like <laughs> part of their thorax and like pulls him <laughs> off of his girlfriend, and you're just like, oh god, that poor actress had to be like covered in tarantulas <laughs> and had to hope that William Shatner would pull him off of her. Yeah. Like she had to put her faith in Bill that is, Shatner. That's a lot of yeah, trust in William exactly. Shatner. <laughs> to pull like like hundreds of spiders off of her. God, I like, haven't seen that movie in forever. See, that should be like a yeah, big show. Pick. 70s, that's on the yeah. level of Night of the Lepus. It is. 1970s Bill Shatner. Yep. On the freak show. You should go back and that was about giant killer bunny rabbits, but it feels like <laughs> Kingdom of the Spiders. Yeah. So, okay, so anyway, you'll buy our forthcoming book and find yeah. out when we track the <laughs> yeah. genealogy of this thing yeah. down. So the spider, um, we learn the biology of the spider later on, obviously, from Exposition Man, who is uh, the Julian Sands character, that the Venezuelan spider is the general. He's the only one who has reproductive organs. He is able to mate with the house spider, mm-hmm. and they produce uh 300, we're saying? We, a ton of spider offspring. 300 were used in the filming. I mean, 300 were used in filming, so <laughs> who knows how many of that. Spiders you know. cannot reproduce on their own. A clever screenwriting device that basically says that when they die, they are going uh, on their natural lifespan. I think it also says that they have an evolved metabolism or something, mm-hmm. and so they're going to die a lot faster than a normal spider does. So all you have to do, really, to wait this out is... Uh, you know, kill wait the, it out. Kill the source, wait it out. Yeah. Die by a spider. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Which everyone has a hard time doing yeah. because no, no matter what they are doing, really the spider difficult. is all up in their business. <laughs> if you're eating popcorn, spider's right up in your popcorn. Yeah. If you're eating cereal, he's in the box of cereal. Well, this is where the movie kind of excels. <laughs> like, if you have arachnophobia, or perhaps if you just don't like spiders um, which is most people this movie is yeah is trying to hit all those pressure points of like ew and you're gonna cover your eyes and do all this stuff because the spiders attack people these killer spiders right get get loose in the town they attack people in the one crawls in the toilet and then a guy yeah, sits down in the toilet it's literally yeah, all it's a, literally all those fear moments that in the back of your head like just everyday life, you get in the shower, you think, "Oh God, I hope there's not a spider in here." You go to put your shoes on, "Oh God, there's I hope there's not a spider in my shoes." Like it hits all of those points. I feel all like this. Them. All of them. I feel like this movie was written because someone read a bunch of like those new he- news headlines that came out of Florida. Because you know Florida has like the worst news headlines ever. Like python alligator found in, in toilet. You oh, know, yeah. yeah, alligator in my pool. You know, yeah. like like Florida has the worst headlines ever. You know. So I feel like this was just a collection of Florida headlines written into the story. Uh, the Florida man subreddit. Yeah. It's like Florida man <laughs> smokes yeah. a meth and masturbates yeah. on police officers. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, because yeah. of those headlines? <laughs> yeah. All right. But Michaela, I have seen the world's most horrifying video on Facebook where you see the worst things that you just wish that you could unsee oh, and you can't. Good for you. It was in a <laughs> uh, airport bathroom and some guy like kicks open a uh, the the... Uh, toilet seat uh-huh. and at least three gigantic spiders. Oh, fuck Don't no. say that. Don't no. say that. I travel. Don't say that. I'm running out of oh, God. Have you seen this video? No. It's like you're I don't never going to see sit it. on a toilet again without lifting the lid. Uh, now, no, now I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm going to find it and I'm going to send it to you. Oh, God. And I'll, I'll watch it live on air, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll react to it in real time. <laughs> so everybody's got this thing about spiders, I assume. If you yep. don't, there's you're just not a human. And being. Yeah, exactly. And this movie is setting out to like exploit every single fear. So it is yeah. it is a horror movie. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Because like the thing I liked about this movie is that the like 
I mean, granted, the one spider was like the size of a football, but there are bird eating, bird eating tarantulas that are rather large, you know. But like other other than that, it was pretty like normal with its expectations. Like mm-hmm. the spiders didn't do anything yeah. ridiculous outside of their capability. Mm-hmm. At, like it's pretty grounded in its I mean, other expectations. Than being like extraordinarily resilient. Yeah, they, they weren't like you know like crazy right. super spiders. But it's but not even, like. But even then, I know everyone's had it. You've had that spider where you go to kill it and it won't, <laughs> won't die. die. Yeah, everyone's had that. Like, right. Hitting but it with the raid or they something. Were, and so they were so general long. Zod spiders. Right. No. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not like yeah, and they weren't super huge. Yeah. They weren't gigantically. You know, like they weren't like the size yeah. of a building or anything. They did you have know? super pronounced fangs. Yeah. yeah. Or some kind of, because you said they were imported from New Zealand? Mm. New yeah, Zealand, yeah. To Australia, yeah. yeah. Or Australia, sorry. Well, yeah. from New Zealand to Australia, yes. Just because it would be some kind of uh, a look to a spider that we're unaccustomed to here, or they're just an aggressive looking spider. Oh, well, we. Spider Olympics. The, the audition <laughs> spiders <laughs> for this movie. Um, they nice. took. A the bunch. worst job ever. Yeah, yeah. The <laughs> poor. Let's talk about that meeting for a minute. Yeah, like they have poor PAs. Like, you really don't have the look we're looking for. Yeah. sorry. It was like a like an American Idol type audition where there's a Simon Cowell. I'm like, just not I'm feeling not, it, dog. I'm not feeling it. Yeah. Well, it's like a reminder of the. I, it, I can't help but think of the snake audition from Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> yeah. Are you afraid of fire? Are you afraid of? You're not afraid yeah. of yeah. fire. You're ruining my movie. You're out. Yeah. 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 But for this movie, they tested like wolf spiders and like, uh, which are actually dangerous and a bunch of other types of spiders on how they jumped and how fast they moved and like how easy it was to manipulate their movement. And that's how they narrowed down to what, you know, there was two types of spiders used in the movie. There was a, a generic house spider. Don't remember what kind. That but was, again, generic, yeah, but it's, generic, still, it's a from generic New house spider. Yeah. yeah. So it's still huge. That is considered yeah. not harmless, but it's still huge. Yeah. yeah. And gross. And um and there was, you know, the bird eating tarantulas for Big Bob. Yeah. Which which anything, well, Big Bob anything, is the animatronic, you said. Right. Yeah. yeah. But like, like whenever it's doing the it, it's like a pole toy, right? Yeah. For some of it, but mm-hmm. whenever in the long shots when like it flips over from being thrown, that's the but, bird eating? but the yeah. word bird yeah. eating tarantula <laughs> should alarm you. That's right. Yes, that's not something you yeah. want near you ever. I yeah. would imagine. I don't want to ever interact with a bird eating tarantula. Yeah. Like Depends you know, on what bird it's eating? Geese. Well, the fucking, <laughs> if it's eating geese, you're fine with it, right? Uh, <laughs> the cave yeah. spiders or the trapdoor spiders. Yeah. And there's just like, God, come on, spiders are the disgusting. <laughs> but if it's big enough to eat birds, that's gross. Look at the camel spiders; they eat camels. Yeah. <laughs> yes, right at those, right at those pictures of camel I'm camel just spiders. The next round. Right. Yeah. The wolf spider. Eats. Wolf spiders. Stop. Those are tiny, but they're scary looking. Like, but. If you want to look the up some wood pile spider, <laughs> if you want to look up something wow. horrifying, look up tail as whip be scorpion. A lot of wood to eat. Yeah, <laughs> right. Like, where did all my wood go in my pile? Yeah, I used to have a giant, big spiders. fat spider sitting there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You want to look up something horrifying? Look up tail as whip scorpion. They were using Harry Potter. They're technically scorpions, but they cannot sting you or harm you. They still look horrifying and gross. Does, uh, yeah, the looks- pinchers. Yeah. Well, they, they like, they have really long spindly legs. So do you. <laughs> she well, have long legs. I well, have sure. personal on the freak show. Wow. This yeah, is why you don't personal bring here. your significant Let's get other. personal here. So the, uh... <laughs> I mean, let's just, let's just all agree that any sort of arachnid is pretty disgusting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Pretty disgusting. And, okay, if anything's called tailless whip legs, anything, right? scorpion, be yeah, exactly. And the pinchers. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But there's some amazing like spider acting in this movie. There is yeah. on yeah. par with the Arrival Scorpion acting, I would say. <laughs> like the the Arrival movie. Check out our previous episode, The Arrival. Um, scorpion acting was pretty great because there's like a part where like the scorpion kind of like came around a corner, hesitated, oh, and then peaked. the Arrival, right? The yeah. Arrival, like, not Arrival. The- Charlie Sheen, yeah, The yeah, Arrival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were there. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah, you were yeah, there. Yeah. Wasn't that long ago oh, yeah, we yeah. did it? Yeah. <laughs> That's um, not where my head went. See, no. I've already forgotten yeah. the movie. Sorry. Yeah, but like there was a part in The Arrival where like a scorpion like came around corner and like peaked and then kept walking and it was like whoa how'd they get a fucking scorpion to do that that's amazing <laughs> because it was good suspense yeah. and then like when they were on the, the ceiling fan and land on the bed it was mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. well it gives you that whole like you know I mean especially we're saying that this was the first film that Frank Marshall directed and like he's gonna take on the you know we're gonna do a movie that's basically an animal film mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. 
only with tons of spiders that we're going to have to direct by. I don't. Nope. How do you bait a spider? I mean, I know that you know they say the the hot the air dryer or yeah. whatever that we're going to blast it from off screen. Well, that's going to motivate it. I mean, do you like do you bait it like? Here, there's a nice little wasp, or wait, no, sorry, cricket, or something like. <laughs> or a rat, if you're the bird eating, yeah, you know, yeah. tarantula. Yeah. yeah. But um, I mean, it's amazing that they're able to, you know, I mean, and God knows how many takes that the mm. actors had to suffer through in order for the spiders to actually do, you know, the the perfect land in the perfect uh, on their mark or whatever. But it's convincing. There's a shot early where I was trying to figure out like where the hell the uh, the the wrangler was. Um, a guy comes through a door and the shots are like, oh, it's low angle on the door jam. And like, after he goes through that spider pops up over the, you know, over the, uh, the edge of the door and follows him in. And I'm like, well, there could be a cut there or whatever. But mm-hmm. I mean, it was still like, you know, wow. How, where's the, I mean, is it like a huge air gun from, I don't know. There was a lot of spider acting in right. this movie where I was unclear, like how they were pulling it off. Well, you know, we talked about Spider Olympics earlier. <laughs> Unfortunately, they had some weird methods of employing, you know, spider acting in this movie. They would kind of f- like freeze coma them with carbon monoxide in this movie, um, so that they were like in a coma almost. And then they would um, attach small magnets to the bottom of their feet, mm. and then from the other side of whatever they were doing, That's a would great job make right their there. legs move with the magnet. Um, small magnets yeah to a spider's foot the poor pa that had to do that job holy shit that was definitely an intern or someone not paid to do that but and they would also do like a wax kind of like form leash that would like connect to the hairs on their thorax um and control their movement that way and you can i i feel like it's most evident in this movie in like the bleachers scene Mm -hmm. because the movement is very jerky and Mm -hmm. awkward and the shower scene like those are the two Mm -hmm. scenes i was like that's when they did the magnets and the like wax leash on their thorax because it looks very awkward and jerky and kind of not natural. But if they did it anywhere else in the movie, kudos because I could not notice it. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it was also like we were saying. The, the, there's a couple of scenes where the spiders get into places where they are immediate. Like the actors have to be super comfortable with these things or what are, i don't know in the bleachers scene they're at a mm-hmm. football game and you see the spider kind of crawling around underneath a girl like moves like oh i felt something and then the spider dangles down on its web and lands in a football helmet and without <laughs> a cut <clears throat> and this is before uh cg and mm-hmm. racing right. stuff yeah guy picks up his helmet walks out onto the field and puts it on mm-hmm. and then passes out a few minutes later well, that was with, after the cut, but right. in without a cut, he, the spider goes in. He puts the thing on his head, yeah. And so it's like, did he just put that hat on with the spider <laughs> in it, or was right. there like some sleight of hand where he got the insect out before putting the thing on his head? Well, didn't uh, he? I think he he raises up with the helmet, and then we see him oh, running so off. A, so a Texas it's a switch switcheroo, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Now I got to watch it again because yeah. I was impressed when I saw it. Now I'm going to be less <laughs> good impressed. Editing. Good editing. Good yeah. editing. That's yeah. where the uh, the magic of uh, film editing just like. Psh, That's right. Yeah. yeah. It was seamless. You know. It was very mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. Very good. We we're saying that as we we're watching it, there are a lot of decent camera well, camera tricks, mm-hmm. camera work in this movie that we yeah. don't see so much in yeah. modern day uh, thrillers, dramas, mm-hmm. whatever. Such think, as. Yeah. All right, the whole scene where um, they're uh, <laughs> tracking by helicopter. Yeah. And then, uh, they zoom in on the car and then follow the car as it pulls into the little town. Mm-hmm. It's like that it goes was... seamlessly from like a helicopter shot to a crane shot yeah. almost. Yeah. And like crane it's... shots in general, you don't see ever at all yeah. anymore. But let alone like helicopter to crane shots. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, f- it's fluid motion wide shots. Yeah. yeah. It really is. Where they zoom in on the hearse, though. That was. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was dope. nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and it's almost was... like the, the hearse, like, comes in. I mean, it's not even finding the hearse on the road from the camera operator. It's like, we're going to, you know, be on. The, it's look at the. They match it. Yeah, we're mm-hmm. flying yeah. over the water, and then we tilt up, yeah. and then the hearse drives into the shot. <laughs> the hearse finds you. We're gonna you. fucking follow it. <laughs> That's what it yeah. felt like. The hearse yeah. finds you. Yeah, yeah. More you're like, just going on, and you're yeah. just joining stories. Mm-hmm. Like these are shots fluid. that we used to see in films all the time that like, right. signify mm-hmm. like this was a cinematic thing because I assume you don't hit that all the time right. on your first 
right. know, rodeo, right? right. Or, you know, I mean, maybe these guys do it all the time. Like, oh, yeah, we totally get, we're on walkie talkies and we figured this out and, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. But there's just, you know, every time I see shots like that, it's, there's, you know, that thing that goes through your head of like, how much effort <laughs> did it take to make that happen? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like a throwaway thing, but it's just, it's a language of cinema that, you know, yeah. I feel like the only time nowadays you see crane shots anymore is when it's like a musical and you have mm-hmm. a group of like 50 people dancing all to one number and you raise up over it to like get the mm-hmm. shot of like all those people dancing. Mm-hmm. Like, but other than that, I feel like you never get crane they shots anymore. Crane shots, But the crane shots now like boom up. So you see the, like the CG mat. Yeah. It's, right. You know, They're not yeah. noticeably crane. Crane shots, out yeah. Of the CG thing into the, you know, yeah, right. Set. yeah, right. Yeah. But you never, like, if you get a TV series or a movie that ends with, like, and we're going to go off down this road and you get a crane shot, like, that never happens anymore. Mm. That's like a dated concept almost, you know? So I appreciated the camera work of this movie. Yeah, I feel like they could start mm-hmm. bringing that back for sure. Or we could just take notes and when we make our movie, it's like a homage to night. When we do our documentary, we'll do a ton of crane shots. <gasps> Colin, crane I shots. I want to make that movie. Could be anything. We'll just shoot it like a 90s movie. Yeah. Oh my God. You can call the movie Crane Shots. Crane Shots. <laughs> Uh-huh. With a Z. With the crane shot. Right. Uh, stop it. Stop uh, yeah. it. Yeah. Stop it. Strike three. No, I don't. Yeah. Stop it. Oh, I'll take my microphone yeah. away. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so the, uh, the, the residents of this small town, we're saying that they all start uh, becoming uh, dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, infected with death mm-hmm. because they're bitten by these extremely toxic spiders. And so the doctor... Be, joins forces with um, the entomologist eventually, mm-hmm. uh, the town exterminator. Right. John play. Goodman. So this warrants some discussion. Yeah, <laughs> obviously. Um, my only com- you know, complaint with this movie is why not more John Goodman? You <laughs> so know? much like, more. He's, he's so good. You know, he's the best combination of Bubbles from Trailer Park Boys uh-huh. and Dale Gribble from King of the Hill because he's an exterminator, but he and has kind of like Bill Murray from and Bill Murray from Caddyshack. Yep. Yeah. yeah, he's the best like combination yeah. of those th- those three things. And it's so unfortunate to have John Goodman in a movie giving it his all and not give him more screen time. Yeah. Was he yeah. giving it his all? Yeah, he was giving because it he his- was not John. He was not the default John Goodman. He gave it in this. Enough. He was. Yeah, <laughs> he, under, that's it. he underplays the part, so he's like he kind does. of mumbling his he lines. Does. I get it. It's for but that's not your effect. typical John Goodman. Yeah. yeah, I get. Yeah, I mean, I suppose that it's not. It's it's a world away from Dan Connor. Which it, I think it really he was is. Doing at the time, yeah. yeah. Roseanne show. He's normally so like loud and boisterous. Yeah. This, and this, he's not at is, all in this, this movie. This is different. This is acting. Yeah. He's not confident in himself <laughs> yeah. at all in this yeah. movie. Like there's points where people talk him out of stuff in this mm-hmm. movie. You know, they're like, oh, I don't think so. And he's like, oh, maybe you're right. You know, like yeah. he's he he could not be farther from Dan Connor at this point in time. Yeah. Right. But he also is like the uh, the distinctly comedic, you know, character. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. mean. Because we're saying that, you know, this movie was sold as a thrill comedy. That was the yeah. tagline that, you know, uh, mm-hmm. uh, Hollywood Pictures came mm-hmm. up with to sell it back in the 90s when it came out. Because they're like, we can't figure out, is it a comedy? Is it a horror movie? <laughs> it's not edgy enough to be like a straight horror movie, but it's not funny enough to be a comedy. <laughs> we'll call it a thrill comedy. What and are you? Oh, and it yeah. worked. It didn't. Nobody went to see it because they were afraid of spiders. <laughs> eh, it came in number three. It's opening weekend against number Ghost three. and... Number three. Okay. And uh, okay, okay, he came in number three against Ghost and uh, Die Hard Two. That's a hard weekend. That's, that's a, good a weekend. hard uh, they, weekend. Were, were they on their first weekend? I no. don't know. They were out for like a month. But still, like that. that's but a sequel to out. one of the greatest action franchises and a Patrick Swayze oh, yeah. Demi Moore movie. That's a hard thing to go up against. Mm-hmm. But you know, pro- that's why we got to find out if that was the opening weekend of those movies or if they came. I don't out think like, it was, uh, but yeah. even still, if you even come out if it was three against two movies that are out already, that's not. All- I mean, that's I guess what I remember hearing in the in Variety or whatever yeah. that like you know they had high hopes that this would become like a thing, mm-hmm. and it really it. 
Well, not that it bombed. It didn't bomb, but it underperformed, and they figured out that the, you know, in the postmortem, that it was because people actually don't want to confront their fear of right. spiders I, and don't want to see it. I feel like if it would have gone in either direction of a of absurdity of being like super huge spiders or like just a ridiculous like number of eight, spiders eight legged freaks if it, if, yeah. if it okay if you're on the spectrum of spider movies if it would have gone in the eight legged freaks direction or in the kingdom of the spiders direction or of absurd big ass amount spider. or big ass spiders yeah like the thing is it was too real cuz it wasn't an absurd mm-hmm. amount it was a regular amount and they were normal sized mm-hmm. that's People don't want to see that. You know, it's, yeah. it's Sharknado syndrome. Mm-hmm. Sharknado is yeah. fun because it's not realistic, mm-hmm. right? You know, this is too realistic for people to yeah. enjoy it. Yeah, this movie is very real. Yeah, because it's it's not a shit because ton of spiders. All your squirm buttons. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's hitting yeah. like all of those. <laughs> because like <laughs> when people interact with the spiders, it's not like they're interacting with a ton of them. Mm-hmm. It's just one in their cereal or in their yeah. you know popcorn. That's no one wants to think about that. Do you want to go to a movie eating popcorn, watch a spider be in someone else's popcorn? <laughs> you know, like, no, no, you don't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you do? Has his hand yeah. raised. do you do? Even though you hate spiders? <laughs> Even though you hate spiders, well, you'd be down with that? Well, is you go sit yeah. in the theater with a, like a feather duster yes. <laughs> yeah. and start tickling the person in front of you. You know, because I remember the experience of watching in the theater. It was one of those things where you become like, Hyper aware of like I don't know like wind <laughs> oh, on the no, hairs on your arms. Yeah. Like, yeah, is there something? Watching, should I lift my legs up the, off the floor? Watching this movie tonight here, I kept scratching like yeah. all I saw yeah. everywhere. That. I was yeah. like, that's yeah. what's yeah. happening everywhere. I just I feel feel spiders I really, yeah. You go to the opening of this movie and you bring like a ten foot long stick with a feather on the end of it. <laughs> yeah, like, gently tickle people's ears. Oh you know? no, it's evil. It's evil. <laughs> oh, hi Satan. Welcome to the freak show. Welcome to the freak show, Satan. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pleasure to be here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So John Goodman wanders in from a totally different movie. Sorry. No. He's, <laughs> he, he's he wandered diametric... out from a Coen Brothers movie. Right. He's yeah. the diametric opposite of the Julian Sands character. Yeah. Who's yeah. all business and is not doesn't mm-hmm. have any humor about him. Uh, Jeff Daniels and the rest of the cast are, you know, I mean. A happy medium. Right. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. a... Jeff Daniels is Jeff Daniels and everything. Yeah. And the yes. town is a nice, quaint. Pleasant town full yeah. of people. Who they got be, white picket fences, you know. And yeah. they'd be at home at the garden party and get out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Out, it, 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 no, it literally, it literally, it literally is the garden party from Get Out it in does this movie. Like it, yeah. It's all the same A white people sinister. in the same ridiculous outfits. <laughs> yeah. No one's bidding on anything. But, yeah. There's yeah. no, there's no auction, but it's still the same party. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and they have this quiet life upended by the alien invasion. Did we mention this time around how this movie is basically like an update of an alien invasion plot from the 1950s where, as explained by the Julian Sands character, yep. this time around I'm like, the Julian Sands character is actually the hero of this movie until he meets his grisly demise by doing something stupid and wandering into the spider's den all by himself. But he says, if the, uh, I don't think we established this this time, the, uh, the, the queen can... She's having babies on her own, mm-hmm. and these babies are going to be able to actually reproduce. And so this is the end of civilization as we know it. <laughs> they were confined in the Amazon by the geography of the trench that they lived in. But now it's going to take this city and this city and this city. That's right. Just spreading yeah. outward. Yeah. So the invaders are here. They're living among you. We yeah. have to track them down. We're calling in the government dudes to, you know, go get them. They're an insidious, <laughs> like, you know, like uh, infiltrating kind of race. <laughs> He actually does. I think Jeff Daniels calls them, and he puts that idea in my head. He said something like, in his traumatic Chekhov's, uh, you know, like, dreams. There was a lot of Chekhov's (laughs) triggers in this. There was Chekhov's termites, Chekhov's nail gun. Chekhov's um, padlock on the cellar door. Mm -hmm. Chekhov's baby memory, (laughs) I guess. Baby memory, memory. yeah. The spider crawls up and has its way with him as he's a child two years old in a crib. His first memory ever. (laughs) Yeah. Arachnophilia, yes. Spider crawling up his naked flesh is how he put it mm-hmm. exact words which being no one... explored by an alien thing he says. 
Fish <laughs> Which no one wanted to hear. <laughs> I shouldn't no. laugh at that, but it's so fucking funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but so he's traumatically scarred by this. But when when the movie hits a climax at the end and he's, you know, you know, fighting the <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to say? I'm just going to say, he's fighting the, like, source of his trauma. <laughs> he's facing you know, his fear. Yeah, he's facing yeah. his fear. It is very Evil Dead, too. Like, his, yeah. the way his face yeah, is bleeding, is. the way the basement is on fire, and he's like, get off of me. He's very, give me back my hand. <laughs> you know, it's very Evil Dead, too, reminiscent. Or at least that's what, how I felt it. And, like, I... Honestly, it made, made it hard for me to take it seriously <laughs> thinking of it as like Evil Dead 2. But it's a great performance. This guy, like, yeah, legitimately sure. seems scared out of his fucking mind like every yeah. time that he's mm-hmm. confronted by these little beasties. Yeah. yeah. These animals. Mm-hmm. Not Get insects. out, damn spider. Arachnids. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As he's trying to overcome his fear. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. we were talking about the, uh, the, 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 the Chekhov's thing. I think, like, mm-hmm. you know, we didn't explain this. The, uh, the, um, we we've been talking about this a lot on the freak show that there's always you know like movies tend to do what uh, uh, the writer Chekhov said you know the, the you'd have Chekhov's gun it's a famous mm-hmm. thing where you'd introduce a gun in the first act and it it's going to show up in the third it would go off I think mm-hmm. he said it's yep. no no good unless it goes off in the third mm-hmm. this movie goes out of its way to set up a lot of things in its first act <laughs> there's a lot of Chekhovs yeah the end of in the third act. With the, this kind of like rhyme, <laughs> you know, to the the screenplay, which is admirable, I suppose, mm-hmm. right? That it feels, yeah, like we were satisfying. saying, we were saying earlier, yeah, Toby said it earlier, it's very satisfying because this movie it has a a literary aspect where everything is uh, like you guys said earlier, it closes the parentheses, mm-hmm. yeah, it brings the story together, mm-hmm. it fills the holes, so that by the end of the movie you're not saying, well, but why did this happen? How did this <laughs> like you feel this genuine sense of satisfaction yeah. all all of the bases have been hit. It's just the exposition in this movie is not heavy handed and it's delivered. No, yeah. It's delivered over several different characters, mm-hmm. which is not delivered by Vincent D'Onofrio. Right. Exactly. <laughs> no right. one wants to watch a movie where one character shows up and it's like, Hey, so this character said this. And then I thought that, and then I was like, well, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Like no one wants to watch a movie where one character is just exposition man. And mm-hmm. this movie spreads it out evenly and it's, it feels natural and it's well done. And that's not something we see see very often nowadays right mm-hmm. um i think like the probably the most egregious example is like suicide squad was really oh, bad God. at handling ex- exposition like to the point that it felt like well, that care these three characters will deliver all of our exposition if we get any well the reason i yeah. use d'onofrio's yeah example, d'onofrio's a good example <laughs> I, think I, saw, yeah. I mean there's been at least three movies the latest one i saw was rings where he shows up to tell you like and this the is the mythology. This, yeah, yeah, this is the mythology. This is who she is, why she's haunting oh, no. you, and blah blah blah. I mean, and then he gets killed like <laughs> shortly thereafter. It's like you were exposition man. Yeah, yeah. that's how they yeah. deal with it. It and seems this movie like in a lot of horror films is, of this uh like budget level or whatever right. nowadays. Mm-hmm. But But this movie does a really good job at like making that feel balanced and feeling it feels earned, you know? Yeah. It, it's like it's not oh God, there's nothing worse than watching a movie mm-hmm. with one character with one expo where they're purpose is solely exposition mm-hmm. and this movie does a good job of like this person will deliver a little bit here and then this person will deliver a little bit here and it'll all add up at it's the complete. end yeah it's, it's, it's complete. complete yeah definitely there, yeah there's you know there was no going back and saying mm-hmm. oh well, we need to add this otherwise this won't make sense like they made all those uh, uh, they filled all those holes already mm-hmm. it didn't feel like anyone had to go back and add anything right and this is to the credit of the screenwriters. We said it was uh, Wesley Strick, who also wrote Cape Fear, right. uh, Wolf, and mm-hmm. great. Both uh, A great Nightmare movies. on Elm Street, the remake. Well, we don't. Well, know except for that one. <laughs> the first two, I will, I will endorse. The third one, I will not. And also Don Jacoby. Don Jacoby story by John, Don Jacoby, who also did Life Force. Life Force. Life Force. <laughs> Check out our previous episode, Life Force. I know, but the reason I'm going all crazy, like I think when we did Life Force, I think we had a different freak show lineup, and I was the only guy mm-hmm. like saying that it was awesome. And now I feel vindicated. Like, we the, vindicate you, Colin. That's right. Because Life Force is a goddamn fucking motion picture classic in my mind. Do you guys think that Stuart Pankin, the sheriff, was just because they couldn't get John Lovitz to do that role? 
Like, that guy was definitely poor man John Lovitz, right? So you're saying that we were supposed to originally like him, but they didn't get John Lovitz? So yeah. Like so him? they were like, well, I guess we can't like him anymore. Because <laughs> we got this other guy. Yeah, that guy was a schmuck. That guy looked like, like, just off-brand to John Lovitz, though. Yeah, he looked like a potato. Long yeah. Javits. Long Javits was his name, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, they fill the supporting cast with a lot of, like, uh, I mean, it's that, that kind of local color of a yeah. small... Uh, you know, country town in the USA. Uh, there's the uh, you know, um, uh, well, the coroner, right? The medical mm-hmm. examiner. Yeah. The mortician, who is always, I think, is a movie cliche. Always eating. They have yeah, to always, always eating. eating. Yeah, in you can't have a movie scene. with a coroner where they don't eat anything. <laughs> in the it's all, it's, the first shot is always a sandwich. Yeah, <laughs> always a sandwich. Because that's morning. shorthand for they're not grossed out by anything. Right. Yeah. 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 And what was her name? Margaret, the... Margaret, the old lady. Yeah. Yeah. She was a looker. Margaret. Yeah. Probably in her, in her younger days. <laughs> sure, Colin. Yeah. Whatever you say, man. I'm really glad that you appreciate an older woman looking good, Colin. That's good. An unfortunate <laughs> victim of the evil spider invaders <laughs> who have to be stamped out by the uh, nail gun fire massacre. <laughs> well, it doesn't sound right, but plucky exterminator. Yeah, the end finds our hero, you know, confronting his childhood trauma, stuck in a position where he can't move. He's paralyzed as a giant spider crawls up his leg. He has to fend the thing off. It's on. He's setting his whole basement and his wine yeah. collection on fire, and he kills it by shooting a, uh, a, a nail, nail gun. gun through it and pinning it to the pulsating uh, egg sac. Good. Yeah. Of the queen, and therefore killing all the other spiders. Of course, well, I guess they did kind of solve, like, well, there's other spiders running around through the town, but they have the accelerated metabolism, and they will die shortly. Mm-hmm. And it sounds like they're dying that night, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the doctor's wife says. Yep. Like, we found yeah. some that are dead already. Boom. Yeah. Taken care of. Done. Efficient. Done. Saves that kind of messy thing where, yeah. like, oh, my God, some kid's going to find one. Or it's going to bite a dog, and the dog's going to become rabid and attack. A, yeah, okay. Yeah. Like Cujo. That's Except with that. this, this movie is much kinder to animals than that, though. They wouldn't do that. So It's true. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm sorry. I was going to bring something up, but I can't remember what it was. That's so okay. I can bring something up if you want. All right. Hit me. Okay. Um, did you guys know that this um this movie originally drew protests because get the fuck out of here the treatment of spiders people were upset because they thought that it was like pit bull syndrome where they were giving spiders like a bad image spiders already have a bad image uh, that's what I'm saying spiders whatever bad image they have they've earned it yeah who you know? are these people and why do we listen to them they were people that were advocating for spiders. This is they were not people, numerous. <laughs> yeah, two people standing but outside of a theater who wanted to get on television. They said that it was tarnishing the image of pup, mm-hmm. of spiders. Spiderman. Sp- Spiderman. <laughs> Jacob Spiderman. <laughs> Jacob Spiderman. Spiderman. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there were there were people people you know only constitutes <laughs> two more than one that means two you know at yeah. you know minimum so. <laughs> We're protesting this movie. So, uh, huh. so it was like two upset entomologists. Yeah. Yeah. That's two. <laughs> two this is just going to make people and, afraid of spiders. Yeah, yeah. They're going to want to kill spiders. But God damn it. We need spiders because spiders keep uh, like all the other bugs in check. Mm, I, mm, spiders are not bees. You know, be, I think bees are a little more. Important I'd rather have check. spiders than mosquitoes. Mm-hmm. Spiders eat mosquitoes. Yeah. I mean, that's true. West Nile and whatnot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ironaconda, a new yeah. movie coming out, <laughs> yeah. coming soon. Yeah. Yep. yep, as we make it uh, here on the Saturday Night Freak Show, and you heard the test run. All right, so any further, uh, like stray observations about arachnophobia before we summon Igor and read our mail, and then have our final wrap ups or reviews for you? John Goodman said, "I don't have any problem with spiders. We see each other eye to eye. Well, two eyes to their sixteen, but we get along well." was John Goodman's quote about working with the giant bird-eating tarantula. The man's a poet. A because, poet, yeah, a national treasure. You know John what? Goodman is a professional. He's a goddamn American hero because he says, fuck that spider, I don't give a shit about it, I'm not going to be afraid of it, and I appreciate that, He man. can handle it because he's a trained actor, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. He said, I worked with the Coen brothers, I can handle anything. There you go, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Twice. No, Twice. Wait, is it more than that? Three times, probably. Well, I was... Barton Fink, Barton Fink, and, and uh, Raising Arizona, Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. hat trick. 
<laughs> he hit that Coen Brothers hat trick. <laughs> there you go. All right, so shall we summon Igor? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. We want to remind you that you can write into us, and we hope that you do, on Facebook. Sorry, uh, Facebook.com slash Saturday Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. On, uh, by email. Saturday Freak, Freak Show at Yahoo.com. And Instagram. Jinx. At Saturday Night Freak Show. And tonight, we heard from Drew Scott, who says about arachnophobia, John Goodman as an exterminator, that needed its own spinoff. <laughs> I agree. Yes. Agreed. Clearly. Coen Brothers. Agreed. Coen Brothers direct yes. that movie. <laughs> uh, Robin Lineman Silberberg is just happy that we're doing this. Says, yay, arachnophobia. Good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hells and yeah. I'll Nick, second that. Yeah. <laughs> Nick Hammond writes in and says, this is way better than Predator 2. Oh. oh. Sorry, yeah. Sean. Shots Sorry, fired. Sean. <laughs> what? Uh, Tim Stotts writes in and says, I've never seen it, but I've always been curious. Check well, it out, man. Time, Tim. man. Now's a Thank good time. You You're in, about Tim. to hear our wrap-ups. <laughs> and movie guru says, uh, this is the only movie I will not watch. I saw this movie once. And developed an intense fear of spiders. <laughs> well, yeah, you can't even eat popcorn, apparently, in the, in the universe of Wait, this, this movie. Wait, this is the only movie you won't watch? Yeah. The only yeah. one? Yeah. You'll watch Solo or, you know, so you're gonna a watch Serbian film. Glitter? Yeah, yeah. Or gl- or glitter. <laughs> Have fun with yeah, that. Like the of glitter. <laughs> uh, Karate Warrior 2 writes in and says, Our science teacher in uh, 10th grade somehow shoehorned a viewing of this in during oh, class. God. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. This is why I'll never know, but I'm pretty sure he was the first teacher we ever had that actually said, I've had enough of this shit in front of the students. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Okay, I'm sorry, Karate Warrior, but I'm pretty sure that teacher was like taking out some microaggressions on your class with that movie. That's hilarious. Oh but, you, but you are probably a better person for it. So, I mean, you know. Yeah. That's really funny. Wow. <laughs> wow. So now we'll go around the room and do our final reviews. You're going to hear from everybody what they actually thought of arachnophobia. I know you're on pins and needles. You have no idea what's <laughs> going to come out of these people's mouths because we've had it before where it's been like a surprise. Talks, I've been surprised <laughs> yeah, before. Yeah, like, what? You yeah. didn't like it or you <laughs> loved it? What the hell are you talking yeah. about? So who are we going to start, start off with tonight? Colin, what did you think of arachnophobia? Well, I'd love to give you my review, Holly. Thank you for <laughs> asking. Uh, yeah, uh, this movie is um, one of those things. I went back recently and watched it uh, prior to tonight. I had purchased the uh, the Blu-ray. Uh, version <laughs> the Blu-ray. Of the, the Blu-ray version of this film. <laughs> and what is the Blu-ray video box like? <laughs> Uh, it's a it's an accurate rep- rep- reproduction of the movie poster, which I appreciate. Yeah, God damn it, it doesn't like have the big head. Like, yeah, it is nice. You know? it it's is, a little I like spider this coming down yeah. in front of the the moon. It's a nice poster. Who put this out? It's not Shout Factory, is it? No, is this is else? from uh, Buena Vista, so oh, it's probably gotcha. like a Disney thing. But it has yeah. like that. This is the I'm looking at the poster now. Yeah, this yeah. is the Amblin color scheme. It you is. notice that? Oh. You got the pinks and the... Yeah. That typeface is oh, very yeah. nice, too, by the it, way. It reads like E.T. Um, <laughs> and a nice typeface. It is a very nice typeface. I'll nerd out over there a little bit. It is very nice. Uh, it's a good line. video box. Yeah, it's a good video Solid. box. Solid. Eight legs, two fangs, and an attitude. <laughs> yeah. It's a great um, tagline. But I saw it because I was doing what I guess we're doing on the freak show right now. Revisiting all the movies that you loved from the 1990s. <laughs> yeah. Going Summer back, 90s, going, baby. Summer that, 90s. That 20-year thing has passed, and you're like, you know, I remember liking these movies back when I saw them. Let's see them again and see if they hold out. And then you go back and you watch these things. And this one actually did stand up mm-hmm. to me and yeah. stood out. Um, I think the writing, I think, is maybe... Is it the thing I'm giving the most credit to? I don't think so. I think the 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 visceral experience, right? Mm. I don't like spiders. Same. I think Word. a lot of you can relate to this. <laughs> Agree. Um, but I was brave enough to go see this thing in the theater, and it did give me the sensation that things were crawling all over <laughs> me. Um, but I think it's a uh, it's a well executed 
well-written movie. I can't stress this enough. I mean, like now, you know, we're, we're talking before the, um, the idea that like a lot of movies now are trying to, or at one point there was the idea that a formula film or something that was written where it would be that pat the, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the setup of everything in the first act that pays off in the third act and the action that connects it in between, um, was a very that was the, that was the formula I guess before you know you actually got like formula like superhero movies like every week I don't hate them either don't get me wrong <laughs> um, but it was like you know we started looking for stuff that was breaking the formula mold you know and this is again I keep saying the name Tarantino on this show but like he really did I mean like when you look at the writing of his movies and the way that he would you know do this kind of like uh, almost bringing a novel the way that a novel was written mm-hmm. in chapters and things going back and forth in time and interrelating. That was, you know, I think arachnophobia at the time that I saw it was part of the, like, this is what we've been doing for years and I'm tired of it. And Tarantino and what the indie film movement of the nineties is doing is new and exciting, you know? And so I want to go that way. And where is this going to lead? And now we've, you know, we're so many years on past it. What is uh 27? Is this movie 27 years old? Oh God. Yeah. Yes. Jesus yes. Christ. I, yes, it is. I know that. So are you, for, Michaela? Sure. I know that for reasons that are not related to my birthday. Wow. Um, I am as old as this movie. Yes. But there's something to appreciate now about the simplicity. It feels like a simplicity of the construction of the plot, the uh, the the drawing of the characters, you know. And the way that they interrelate and how everything seems to check out and goes to a, as Toby said, a, a satisfying conclusion. Yeah. You yeah. feel satisfied being in this movie. It builds in action and suspense from, you know, I mean, there's the initial, you know, like here's the the evil thing, the mm-hmm. invader, the creepy thing. And by the end of it, there's a super tense climax between our hero and the antagonist the spider <laughs> that's just like i mean this is amazing i mean like you really are like i was biting my nails watching it even tonight <laughs> you know and there's a lot of jump things along the way it is a, a really good movie um also i think uh james gunn mm-hmm. has mm-hmm. also seen this movie <laughs> yeah uh, he has and, too and our yeah. previous uh saturday night freak show uh-huh. big night of the creeps yep because if you watch his movie slither you'll see direct yeah. quotes i think from not direct quotes homages Oh, uh, direct pa- shots. Paraphrases. Yeah. Paraphrases. I like that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, because yeah. it doesn't seem like he's, he's ripping it off. Yep. He's borrowing from yep. or mm-hmm. paying, uh, you know, homage to these films that he's seen. <laughs> but it's nice to know that someone making movies nowadays yeah. is influenced by these greater movies of the and past. And we'll give a nod. And we'll give a nod to done it. it. Yeah. You know, it's, it was done well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I would highly recommend this movie. I, You know, even. And I think. Even though it has kind of a sweet nature to it, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. it does feel kind of like a Disney film or like mm-hmm. a Doc Hollywood or something like that or a Popcorn-y. son-in-law or whatever. Yeah. yeah. This it's could be a family s- film. Yeah. Yeah. There, there it is. It's a family film. It almost feels like it's a <laughs> yeah. family horror movie. But the the queasiness factor brought on by the, mm-hmm. the spiders is like... I wouldn't show this to a kid. They're going to have nightmares for the rest of their life. They're going to be terrified yep. of spiders forever, right? So it, that kind of pushes it over into, you know, like more of a hard horror movie. Yeah. Even though the tone of it doesn't suit it, it's just like, you know, that fear of spiders is so ingrained in us that, you know, the exploitation of it in this, better than any other spider movie I've seen, mm-hmm. uh, just – it bothers you in a, kind of an R-rated way, even yeah. though it's a it's a PG movie with an R-rated kind of you know like impact. So it's a PG thirteen as the actual mm-hmm. you know the middle range rating that they gave it. So I would definitely recommend Arachnophobia. I think it's a really good, smart horror thrillomedy. <laughs> Toby, what'd you think? Arachnophobia. Wow. Um, well, I still think that it is just. James Bond for spiders, um, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe arachnophilia. Yeah. Um, it was a lot of fun. You know, it's a little campy at times, but uh, it's definitely a fun ride. Um, not going to go too deep into it, but um, I think that you will enjoy this movie. There's a lot of good acting in it. 
there's a lot of bad acting in it, uh, but it's definitely worth watching. Well, you said it was different than what you remembered it being. All right. You mean? Well, well, as a kid, I definitely remember the spiders being a lot bigger and scarier. <laughs> <laughs> watching it now, the spiders are not nearly so big, but they're still pretty scary. So <laughs> I think that is the major difference. Um, definitely worth watching now. <laughs> There's a lot of things of note about this movie. <laughs> um, we talked about a lot of them, but just a just a side note: there are so many pleats on Jeff Daniels' pants <laughs> that it's almost like one of those magic eye paintings. That, like, if you feel like you look at it, like with it's your an eyes in focus, you'll see something. Yeah, like there's so many straight up pleats on his pants, and he has like an 18 inch crotch on a lot of his pants. It's like, yeah. like this so long. Like, I get those probably the style of the time, but. But at the same time, this wasn't that long ago. Yeah. Um, but no, like the '90s fashion, like you forget about these things. But his wife wearing the wool sweater with shorts. Yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah. What yeah. are you doing? Yeah. It was almost what? like it was almost like um, like leprechaun level fashion where yeah. she's wearing like the LA gears and like that. Yeah. <laughs> Go check out our leprechaun episode, by the way. Um, but like fashion aside, um, the way they handled exposition exposition so delicately. But yet, like, enunciated the right notes, yeah. but without being heavy-handed. It was really well done. That Jeff Daniels was great. Not as great as he is in some other things, mm-hmm. but, I mean, given what he had to work with and working with, uh, you know, working with working against a spider in most scenes, you know, <laughs> he did a pretty good job. Uh, I think it's a. I think it's got good suspense. It, it has a nice grounded realism that a lot of creature movies lack. Mm-hmm. Um, like, a lot of creature movies, it's about, like, like one of my favorite creature movies is them, which is about giant radio, like nuclear ants. Yeah. You know, which like, obviously that's fucking terrifying. If you have ants that are the size of the Chrysler building, you know, mm-hmm. but in this movie, it's like, they're just normal sized spiders for the most part, you know, at the biggest, they're like, you know, maybe a foot, maybe a little more, but you know, it's not like nuclear sized anything, or it's not like an absurd amount of things. It's that nice sweet spot in the middle of like realistically normal amount of, and size of creature that makes it unsettling. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's why I really enjoy it. And I think it's a good movie. I think it's worth watching. It's grounded and it has good character development. It has good exposition. My only complaint is I want more John Goodman. Yeah, dude. I, like, like I would follow his character through, like going house to house, being an exterminator. Where his, where's his spinoff movie? Of, you know his character, um, because it feels like a Coen Brothers character in a movie that is much more grounded than most Coen Brothers movies. But yeah, I definitely recommend it. What do you think, Holly? Um, well, you know, I, I picked this movie because it is the summer of nineties mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. also, um, because I have a massive Spider-Man boner <laughs> and I needed to, the f- original Spider-Man. Yeah, Spider-Boner. I, I do. I have a major Spider-Man. <laughs> Jeff boner. Daniels was the original Wait, Spider-Man. What? What? <laughs> spiders, I'm, man, Spider-Man, Spooderman. Man. Spiders. And there's a man. And you like Spider-Man. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. spider and I, there's men in this movie. You are, you are J. Jonas Jameson. <laughs> yeah. I want pictures. I'm the Spider Man. Give me proof of Spider Man. It's the summer of spider movies. Kingdom of the Spiders is coming up next, Holly. No, no, yeah. it's just. Damn it. Kingdom of the Spider Man. <laughs> no, it's summer of 90s. There's a new Spider movie coming out, and I was just like, dude, we should watch Arachnophobia. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's where I went with that. Yeah. Because I grew up with this movie. I watched it so much when it I was, was a kid. Cable it was all on the time. all the time. It's on cable and I watched constantly. it constantly. Um, and I agree with Colin. It still holds up. Like mm-hmm. it's it's just a well done movie. And I I mean we said it before. I think a lot of that can be attributed to the fact that it's produced by Steven Spielberg. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that just proves that you know you can take a movie like this and if it's professionally done, like it can still be a really fun mm-hmm. movie. It can be a very well done movie. It doesn't have to be this massive epic like big huge budget movie like you can make good movies th- with a fun story like a weird yeah. story you know you can make these these eclectic kind of movies mm-hmm. and I, I i kind of i, I love that because it, it's just so rare um and we already talked about the 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 script the way it fills all the holes mm-hmm. it's so satisfying it's just it's a refreshing movie. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. it's a thriller. It's kind of funny. It's just 
it doesn't feel like any movies that are coming out now. Mm-hmm. It's 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 like we've lost something in the past 27 years that we didn't realize we lost. It's pretty you know? seamless. Like it's it a is. pretty seamless movie. Like, it is. There's not a lot of flaws in it. No, and it's even it's beautiful. Like the shots in Venezuela, the 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 wide crane shots. It's mm-hmm. it's all very well done and I I think that you know we we were talking about it earlier. You know it's like we almost feel bad giving this movie credit. <laughs> yeah. But we shouldn't. Like, it's a good yeah. movie. It is. Um, so, yeah, I I, def- I have no regrets picking it. I love it. I think everyone should watch it. And I think it's going to... Uh, to me, it's a classic. And it's going to continue to be a classic. So, mm-hmm. for sure. Everyone watch Arachnophobia. It's awesome. Yes. Mm. As yeah. therapy for some of you. <laughs> therapy. <laughs> All right, so that's arachnophobia. Next week, we're going to be watching a movie chosen by Michaela. What are we watching next week? Well, you know, guys, we're on the summer of Canon. That's right. And last week, we uh, or last time I I chose a summer of Canon movie, we watched Breaking, where we saw the uh, screen debut of Jean Claude Van Damme. <laughs> yeah, we're going to continue th- with his career with Bloodsport. Bloodsport. Oh. Kumate. 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 <laughs> We're going to go to Kumite with Bloodsport. I love it. My dreams of seeing Cyborg again. No, no, no. All right, so that's going to be next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, my friends, the basement is going dark.